And a lot of my friends at work would be like, man, you know, when's Trigger going to hire you? And I would just laugh it off like, that's never a, a possibility. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You know, I'm just, I'm just the guy that, you know, I grew up in Lake Moore, Ohio. I said, you know, one of my hashtags on my Instagram is just a kid from Lake Moore. You know, I never, you know, I know, I know big barbecue guy, you know, I just, I'm passionate about it. I love it. Yeah. You know, and I never thought it would ever be a possibility. So to be with you today and to be talking about a brand that I'm so passionate about that I love so much, um, it's really cool. Everybody, this is Ben with Red Barn Home Furnishings, and this is the Unexpected Podcast, episode five. And today, I'm super pumped to have with me Keith from Kryptonite Barbecue. We're going to talk about Keith's awesome journey from just cooking in his backyard to how he got to where he's at now uh, with uh, Traeger and all the cool stuff he does. Uh, I'm really excited today because we're also while we're recording the podcast. Keith is cooking some tomahawk steaks for us, oh, yeah. and at the end we're gonna we're gonna eat some of those up. We're gonna yum yum those. So uh, really excited about that. Before we get into it, I want to make sure that I um, mention how to find both of us. Uh, obviously, Red Barn Home Furnishings. That's my company. You can find me at RedBarnHomeFurnishings.com or on Instagram at red underscore barn underscore home. I got it right that time. I always mess it up. Good man. And uh, also on Facebook, uh, you can find Keith, Kryptonite yep. Barbecue on Instagram. W what else, where are the other places so to find So Kryptonite Keith? Barbecue on Instagram and also Facebook, the same and the same handle. Make it simple for everybody. So, cool. Yeah. Yep. No, yep. no, no ticky talky, huh? No. Yeah. I'm well, you not. know what? I don't, I'm on TikTok, but I don't ever, I don't ever go there. And I think I even have a Twitter and I never do that anymore either. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. I, but yeah. Yeah, I don't do Twitter or Tiki Talk. Yeah. But I uh, I do have YouTube. You can find actually if you're watching this, you're watching it on YouTube right now. So uh, make sure nice. to like and follow on YouTube. Make sure to check out Keith at Kryptonite Barbecue. So uh, really excited about that. So Keith, let's just jump right into it. Yep. What exactly do you do as far as Kryptonite Barbecue and then with Traeger as well? So Kryptonite Barbecue is born. Um, you know, just like your podcast is unexpected. It was unexpected. Yeah. Um, entered a contest in my hometown at Hartville Hardware. They had their 2016 uh, Grill Fest. So as a local, uh, I cooked on Traeger. I had three of them at the time. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to enter this contest. They were cooking uh, baby back ribs that day. Okay. And had a good recipe, was cooking them quite a bit for the family. And I thought, I'm going to go ahead and enter this contest. So... There were 10 folks cooking on Traeger. There were 10 folks cooking on Green Egg. So we entered the contest, um, and as fate would have it, we won best Traeger, and then we won best overall. Oh, wow. So that's when Kryptonite Barbecue was born. Um, a fellow by the name of Greg Rempe, he does the Barbecue Central show. I never even knew who Greg was at the time. He came up and did a quick interview. I was actually on w, uh, what, uh, uh, WNIR with Bob Golick. Oh, Bob Golick, so, no kidding. <laughs> so Bob threw me on the air and, and spoke to, to, to me, and I actually took him up. I made him some ribs because he didn't try any. Yeah. So I actually made him up ribs the following Monday and took him to the station. That's cool. So he enjoyed those. So so that's how Kryptonite Barbecue was born. I had a name in my mind, you know, and uh, so when Greg Rempe asked me, you know, what's the name of your barbecue team? Because that's the first time that I've ever competed. Yeah. And... Uh, I, I told him Kryptonite Barbecue, and uh, so from that, that's when it was born. Awesome, awesome. So uh, you you started out on the top, so to speak. Uh, yeah. And uh, when in, I mean, for anybody that doesn't know, Hartville does a very large grill fest competition. We actually just were up there this past weekend. We were. Yes. It was pretty uh, crazy. Uh, you should, for anybody that hasn't seen it, go back through our socials and check out yep. all the videos from that. It was awesome. So to win that right off the bat, yep. like that's that's a huge, huge step. Um, and uh, obviously got on people's radar right off the bat, just like that. Yeah, so when I was there, um, little, little did I know that some of the executives from Traeger were there. Okay. Um, they had just, so in 2016, uh, there was some new ownership, you know, a couple years prior to 2016 that had purchased Traeger. 
and they were there. They did a custom build at Hartville Hardware. So they had a custom build out at that time. So some of the higher ups were there and I didn't know any of them. I didn't know anybody from Traeger. So when I was competing, the 10 of us, uh, there was a fellow by the name of Luke Edgar, uh, who was the vice president of sales at, at Traeger. So Luke was going from contestant to contestant, just introducing himself, okay. asking them if they've ever cooked on a Traeger before. And he got to me and he said, you know, do you own a Traeger? Have you ever cooked on one? And I said, yeah, I have three of them. And he literally took a chair and sat down yeah. next to me. He gave me his business card and he said, what do you like? What don't you like about the product? And I said, uh, I love the product and I'm super excited that Hartville Hardware actually now carries your product because it's a mile from my home. Yeah. So I said, I just wish they carried more of your product because at that time they just had a small offering because yeah. they were just getting into Traeger. Testing it out. Yeah. So he gave me his card and again, his fate would have it. I won it. Him and I took a photo op after the contest, which was cool. And a few days go by and I told my wife, I said, you know, because he wanted me to send him an email with my address and things. And yeah. so a couple of days go by and I decide, you know, hey, I need to send him an email. So I sent him an email, thanked him for his time. You know, it was nice to meet him. All that good stuff. Gave my address. And then uh, a couple of days later, he reached out to me and he just said, you know, he was so excited that, you know, I had won that I beat Green Egg, you know, one of our competitors, you know, so he was happy about that. And uh, so he said, just keep a lookout in the mail. You know, we got some stuff coming to you. So probably a week later, I come home from work and there's just piles of boxes on my porch. And because I told him one thing I wanted to get at Hartville was they had a rib rack that you can hold more ribs on your grill. You know, because I at that time, I just had a couple Pro 22s, some of our smaller grills. And I said, man, I just wish I had you know, rib rack and they didn't carry, Hartville didn't carry them at the time. And he said, oh, I'll send you one out. Well, he didn't send me one. He sent me probably like five of them okay. <laughs> amongst shirts, hats, pellets, consumables, you name it. All sorts of stuff. Yeah. And then a day later, another shipment arrives. And I, you know, I was very overwhelmed. I was very humbled because I'm just a guy from, you know, yeah. Hartville. I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just you know, working hard, just enjoyed what I did. Yeah. And then they said, hey, what would you ever think about, you know, we, we do events at Hartville frequently. Would you ever consider like demo cooking for us? And I had never done that before. And I'm like, sure, why not? I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So Terry Pearson, um, who's now my boss, he reached out to me and he says, um, hey, I'm going to be there. And it was for their full tool sale. Okay. Would you mind coming out and cooking for us? And um, I'm like, sure when's the date so he gave me the date well the date happened to be when we were celebrating my mother's 70th birth or her yeah it was her no it was her 80th birthday oh wow and i was like okay when's this uh, event gonna be you know all this stuff because I, I just you know we already had these plans for my mom's birthday party and um and it was it wasn't gonna conflict but i told my wife i said I have to take advantage of this opportunity because I don't know where it's going to lead me. Yeah. I have to do this. I have to make the time to fit this in. And my wife to this day has helped me with every, pretty much every event. You know, she's been there for me. Yeah. So we, we go and we, we help Terry and we, we knocked it out for the park, you know, knocked it out of the park for him. And then from that time on, he just continued to use us. And um, it, it, it pretty much led me where I'm at today. Cool. So, he, he saw so much in what you did there at that contest that you started not necessarily on the payroll of Traeger, but they were they had you there cooking for them on their on their product to show what it was capable of. Correct. Is that right? Yep, yep. Okay. Well, that's <clears throat> that's a pretty substantial, uh, like, jump. Yeah, it was because, you know, I would adjust my schedule to, to help with them with certain events. You know, they were typical on Saturday, so they didn't it didn't really mess with my work schedule. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the great thing was, you know, they're, they're like, hey, we'll give you a little bit of, you know, you know, they paid me 250 bucks every time I did a demo for them, which was nice, yeah. extra fun money. But um, it also allowed me to to do something I was passionate about. I love the brand. I love the product before I knew anybody at the company. Yeah. And then it just gave me and I never dreamed that I would ever work for the company that you know, the grill brand that I love their product so much. It was never on my radar. Yeah. You know, it was something that I never thought about. I would have coworkers, you know, where I worked at the time. I worked at Summit Racing Equipment. Summit Racing. And okay. I worked there for many years. And a lot of my friends at work would be like, man, you know, when's Traeger going to hire you? And I would just laugh it off. Like, that's never a possibility. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You know, I'm just, I'm just the guy that, 
you know, I grew up in Lake Moore, Ohio. I said, you know, one of my hashtags on my Instagram is just a kid from Lake Moore. Yeah. You know, a little, little village, you know, and I live in Hartville, which is a village, you know, so it's kind of funny, but you know, I, I just, you know, I never, you know, I know, I ain't no big barbecue guy, you know, I just, I'm passionate about it. I love it. Yeah. You know, and I never thought it would ever be a possibility. So to be with you today and to be talking about a brand that I'm so passionate about that I love so much, um, it's really cool. That is, that's, Super cool. And, and so often, you know, people are always trying to get to where you're at. All Everybody on social media with all their hashtags and tagging and all this other stuff. And everybody's trying to uh, become a part of uh, just a product, you know, just like a product. Not necessarily even one that they are passionate about. Just anybody that will flip a bill for them. Yeah. And you were able to get uh, hooked up with somebody who you're passionate about and you and you like their what they have to offer their product uh, not just the grills themselves but the the seasoning and mm -hmm. the pellets and everything the whole kit and caboodle and that's that's really really uh, that's awesome because I know from my perspective what I'm doing you know uh, there's so many different products out there that you could get hooked up with and there's ones that you don't necessarily want to get hooked up mm -hmm. with and uh, I strive really hard to get hooked up with companies that I believe in. So, like, if, yeah. I, if I'm talking about something, it, I actually do use it. You know, a lot of people, they're, uh, <laughs> they're just looking for a paycheck. And yeah. that's, a, that's actually a conversation I had with the one guy that I'm uh, uh, lightly associated with. Uh, we had a long conversation about loyalty. And he didn't want to have somebody who was just going to jump from company to company to company. Yeah. And I was with, I was a huge fan of theirs before I ever met them. Same as you and Traeger. Yeah. The big thing, Ben, and you know this as well as I, um, a lot of people want either that prestige or that, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's hustle, it's work. Yeah. You've worked hard for what you have. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes that no one sees. <laughs> You know what I mean? They oh, see yeah. the, they see the finished product. Yeah. They see how awesome it is, you know, but they don't see the hours, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the they don't see they don't see all that. All that. And it's the same thing with, you know, what I get to do. You know, a lot of times I'll be out demoing and uh, on a Saturday, I'm and I may be in another state. I'm away from my family, I'm away from my friends, you know, I'm at a dealer, you know, handing out chicken wings or handing out a piece of steak or handing out something and people will come up to me and Man, you got the best job in the world, and I and I truly believe I do. But I'm just handing out chicken wings, you know. I'm handing out steak, you know, and I'm thinking I'm I'm away from my family, you know. And they don't they don't and I, I and I, the reason I say that is to say this: they don't see all the prep, they don't see all the shopping, they don't see all the you know hours of there. There's things that you make that you may fail. Yeah, all the sacrifice. You know, I'm sure you've the... probably done some pours with epoxy that weren't too good. Yeah. And you've learned some valuable lessons. Yeah, I, I talk about that all the time. The You can walk into my shop um, and see my mistakes on the floor. Yeah. Uh, all the spills or whatever. And uh, it's... Failure is a wonderful, wonderful teacher. I, I've, I say that all the time. And it's, it's, that's how, you know, somebody's earned it. Yep. And, uh, if, if you don't earn it, if you don't put in that time, it's just, a, it's another throwaway thing. And that's, uh, that's what separates. I, I think that's what separates people who are super successful. Yeah. Um, and success isn't necessarily in dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. Success is uh, happiness in what you're doing. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what separates the successful people from the people who are just fly by night trying to get clicks and likes and and yeah. uh, notoriety or I don't even know. There's <clears throat> there's some thirsty folks out there and yeah. uh, try not to be one of those. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can never stop learning. You know, I mean, it's one of those things and you learn from failing. You know, that's something I tell people before when they get their first Traeger, you know, I say, I, I tell them it's a learning, if it's the first grill that they've ever bought, a pellet grill, and they've maybe switched from gas or charcoal, I say it's a learning curve. It's a wood fired outdoor oven. Don't be afraid of it. A lot of people are, they're intimidated by it. And I said, they're super simple. Just don't overthink it. 
you know, but there's a little learning curve if they've never owned one, but just don't be intimidated and you can't be afraid to fail. Yeah. You know, you can't look at maybe something on my social or, or something on Traeger's social that they, that they post and say, man, I want it to look like that. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that you, you just can't throw your hands in the air and say, I'm done. I quit. I mean, if we all did that, we're never going to go anywhere. We're never going to succeed or do anything, you know, worthwhile. So yeah. I'm sure again, you know, there's been times that you've had those moments where it just didn't go according to the plan. You had a plan in your mind that you wanted to execute and you felt you executed it properly and it just didn't work. Yeah. But it's, it's no fault to your own. It's just, you, you learn from those mistakes. And I've been there with, man, the first time I did a brisket, it was for the 4th of July for my family. And I'm like, man, I, I'm going to do this brisket. And I put this brisket on and I obviously cooked it way too hot, too fast. And it was horrible. I mean, it was awful. I saw the picture somewhere of me holding the pan with it. And just, it was, it was, and my mom, God love her. She's just like, it's okay. It's, it's, it's good. You know, being a typical mom, being supportive. And I'm like, mom, this is, it's horrible. It's like the turkey at Christmas yeah, vacation. Movie. Exactly. Yeah. The, the same thing. It was terrible. And, um, but I, I continue to learn. And my biggest helper was, was Danielle Bennett. You met Danielle Diva Q at oh, yeah, Hartville yeah. just the other day. Just she met. was in town. Uh, Hartville brings her in every year. So a couple years back, so I think after I won in 2016, 2017, she was in town for a grill, for a grilling class for Traeger at Hartville Hardware. And um, I had the opportunity to work with her two days in the, in the, in the truck helping her. Uh, they were doing a, a class there. Yeah. So Traeger did these shop classes and they had a two night class at, at Hartville. And uh, so I had the chance to work with her one on one in the trailer. And she's asking me about, you know, how are your ribs? How are your chicken? How, you know, just ask me how different meats that you would cook that when you competed. And she's like, how's your brisket? And I said, it's horrible. It's terrible. And she's like, well, why? What's wrong? And I just said, I, it, I just, I, I think I'm overthinking it. I just can't, I can't do it. And she's like, well, you're going to learn, you know, I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. And she did, you know, she took the time throughout the class. One of the nights was brisket. And I got to see, you know, she showed me how to trim properly. She showed me how to season it properly, she, the proper temps, the proper everything, wrapping, and the whole nine yards. And the great thing was, you know, she'll, she'll start from like a raw product to a finished product in the class, you know, to teach the students. Yeah. So they obviously had a raw brisket that they had trimmed out and all ready to go. So for all my hard work helping her for those two days, she gave me that brisket. And she goes, now I expect you to go home and I expect you to cook this yeah. and do everything I taught you. And I did. And... I nailed it. And it was one of those things I was overthinking. It was more, it, yeah. it, it was easier. I was just so in my mind, you know, I'd watch these shows on TV, barbecue pit masters and different things. And people do things different. And I just was really overthinking it. So to, and that was my Achilles heel. So to finally like conquer that and then to, to not, and then, you know, through the years, the short gap that we did compete, you know, to, to place and win first place brisket at some events. It was yeah. awesome. It was always a, a humbling experience to win that because it was, it was such, it was hard for me to, to do that for whatever reason. Yeah. So now when I sell a grill and somebody's like, someone just said it this weekend at Hartville at the grill fest, someone bought one of our brand new um, timber lines, like what the one we have on your porch that we're cooking those tomahawks on. Yeah. And they bought uh, one of our little timber lines and they said, uh, the guy's like, I'm going to go home and cook a brisket. And I'm like, <laughs> don't do that, man. Start with something else, you know, because <laughs> I've been down that road. If I, I said, have you made one before? He's like, no. I'm like, yeah, start with something else. Do like a pork butter, do ribs. Don't don't start with that because yeah. most people, it, it's it's just a learning thing, you know. It's a science. Yeah, it is. And it's Science and an art. Completely. Yeah, and there's a certain process to do it properly to have a, have a real nice brisket and uh, you know the proper you know the taste the tenderness the whole nine yards and, but once you get it you're good yeah, yeah exactly yeah huh. well that's <laughs> it, people don't realize how much it goes into that stuff no they sit down at the barbecue and wherever they're at uh you know whoever says what's best i've been to texas and st louis and kansas city and they're all awesome in their own oh, yeah. ways uh but they just they look at the food and they're like well okay they don't realize how many hours upon yeah. hours upon hours that that stuff gets smoked or cooked or whatever. Um, so yeah, a lot yeah, of time goes into it for sure. A yeah. ton of time. Yeah. Any, any good food like that, a ton of time. And, and to your other point to say that it is a learning curve when I have a Traeger mm -hmm. um, and uh, that I got it up at Hartville as well. And when 
we made the switch. I, I originally used to cook on charcoal. That's what I grew up cooking on was charcoal. That's yep. what my dad, my dad still cooks on charcoal. And my wife grew up cooking on gas. Okay. And that's what she had. And we made the switch over to the Traeger and there were some struggles there for yeah. sure. It, yeah. it, it takes an adjustment, like just to get through your head, the, the certain things you don't have to do that you used to have to do because yeah. it's a slower process. And, but man, the product is fantastic. Like, the burgers that come off of there and the things that she's made when she nails it, um, pretty fantastic. There was yeah. a little overcooking on some ribs once, yeah. but you get it figured out. Yeah. So before you got to Hartville when you won in 2016, mm -hmm. what's the what's the build up to get to that point? You, you said you had three Traegers. Yep. And like what... Was it just that you went to a barbecue place sometime? You're like, this is awesome. I want to learn how to do this. Or was it a different sort of a, of a pathway to that? What, what, le what led you to that? No, that's a great question. So, you know, when we were younger, there was Damon's, the yeah, place for ribs, Damon's. man. Oh, yeah. And I love Damon's. I thought Damon's was awesome. And I hated when Damon's closed. It, it was it was a great place to go, yeah. just not on a first date. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Damon's was awesome. So I love Damon's. And... Uh, so sadly, you know, over the years they've closed. And um, so I had a friend, so in the early days of Facebook, you know, I had a friend that would post pictures of cooking food. Yeah. And I once reached out to Mitch and I'm like, what are you cooking on? And he said he was cooking on a Traeger. And I've ne I have never heard of it at that time. Didn't know what it was. Yeah. Knew nothing about it. So, but he was posting some amazing photos of food that he was cooking on this grill. So I remember many, many years ago, before I bought my first one, looking them up and they were kind of pricey for something that I knew nothing about. Yeah. And so I shorted it. So it was always in the back of my mind that that product and that grill, but I never did anything with it. And then I tried to do barbecue on different, you know, whether it was gas, primarily gas, you know, I would try to do it. And I just, I just couldn't do it right, you know. Yeah. Didn't really have a lot of knowledge with what I was doing with it. So years go by and I thought, you know, I, I would revisit looking to try to find a Traeger. And at that point, there weren't many dealers around because they started out in the West and yeah. they slowly migrated out East. So there wasn't many dealers around that even sold the product. So I looked on Craigslist for their used grills and there was a guy that was selling a little Tex Elite. So it's now like it would be like at Hartville, if you went there today, it would be like a Pro 22, but it was the older version. So this gentleman was selling this grill and it was around Father's Day. So I'm like, hey, maybe I can talk my wife into getting it. And I can't even remember, Ben, what the guy wanted for this grill. I can't remember, but I think I offered him 250 bucks for it. Okay. The only reason he was selling it because he wanted the money because he was going to buy a bigger one. Okay. So I reached out to him. He agreed to take what I wanted. So we went up and he lived up in North Ridgeville. So we drove up to North Ridgeville to pick this thing up. And this guy was super passionate about this grill. Hmm. I knew nothing. Like, again, I've never cooked on one, never owned one. We get out over a minivan at the time because I had four daughters. So we drive up there, had to take the little chimney off of it to get it in our minivan. And this guy was just going crazy. He's like, this is the best grill ever. You ain't going to believe it. You need to go get a pork butt. You need to get apple pellets. You need to do this. You need to... I mean, he was just going crazy. And that's the only reason he sold it, because he was buying a bigger one. Yeah. So went home and got it put together, you know, put the stack back on it, all that stuff. And um, we did ribs for the first time at home. I had a couple of friends over and just nailed the ribs the grill made it effortless just the way it worked yeah and then from that moment i was hooked i was just hmm. i was hooked hooked with that product that's cool good food it was yeah you know and uh, my wife and i always love to entertain and have folks over and uh so yeah we did we had a couple friends over to to try the product and they they loved it and um yeah i still have that grill to this day i wish i knew who the gentleman was yeah. You know, I wish I knew who he was. I wish I had our old email exchange or whatever to find him and just to meet him and say, you know, he, he would, I think he'd freak out knowing that I worked this for the company. I yeah. It. yeah. I, I, he, I think he would just be like, are you kidding me? Because, you know, again, it's, it's unexpected. I never would believe ever yeah. that I would be where I'm at today. You know, I was just, 
you know, I, just a guy that was passionate about barbecue. You know, I enjoyed cooking it for friends. We, we enjoy entertaining and having friends and family over and um, never thought, you know, I'd be doing what I'm doing today. And it's and it's a blessing and an honor to be a, to be able to work for the company that I work for and to be able to do what I do and to be able to work with the dealers that I work with. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that is it's it's. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on this because your your story is so just like relatable to the point where it feels like anybody could have gotten into that position, just the initial one. Like it's something that so many people like. It's a whole different subculture, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like I was talking about that uh, with one of my, uh, a, a guy I know. There's all these different little subcultures, but the barbecue subculture is an extremely passionate group of people yeah and it's almost like rock starish yeah you know what i mean like mm-hmm. the ones that are really good have this rock star persona everybody walks in and they're covered in tattoos and all this other stuff not you yeah but um <laughs> and it, the ones that are like diva for instance mm-hmm. she like has a presence when she walks in like everybody's like that's her. Yeah. And the that that subculture, a lot of people that aren't associated with that or don't realize it, they don't get it, but it's it's something else. Yeah, and you figure Diva, I mean, she's such a sweet person and she's such a great friend, you know. And um you figure a lot of barbecue guys, they're they're men, you know, and to be a woman and to get into that, yeah. you know, I'm sure that when she was getting into it, I'm sure, you know, she got a lot of you know, flack from people, you know, yeah. a lot of from men, unfortunately, and she's worked hard for what she has. And I mean, she's a multi, multi, multi time champion in multiple contests. And she won Kansas City or something. Yeah, she? she won. I know she's won like <clears throat> best something out there. Uh, but she's she's so she's such a great teacher. She's a wealth of knowledge. She's written her own cookbook. I, I'm, I'm assuming eventually she'll have another one coming out. But you know, that's one of the reasons Hartville has her back every year. She's she's so she's such a good teacher, you know, because she's she she does. You know, I mean, she's she's grinding. She's working hard. I mean, that that woman travels everywhere. I mean, she goes everywhere. Yeah. She's telling me all the places <laughs> she's going. I couldn't believe it. The places she was rattling oh. off. She's going to uh, Israel. Yeah. I think she's going to Israel like real soon. Yeah. Like, like in the next month or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She was rattling off all the places she was going to. Where'd she been? Yep. And uh, but that's uh, kind of the same for you, though. You're traveling all over. You're doing yeah. all sorts of stuff. You had touched on it earlier, the amount of uh, of grinding that you've had to do. Yeah. I mean, from 2016 to now 2023, yep. the amount of hard work and sacrifice you've had to do is I'm sure it's pretty substantial. It is. I mean, but it's one of those things where you're so blessed to do what you do and you love it. So I don't feel that it's work. You know, I've told people that before. I said, I don't feel like I work a day in my life because I love what I do so much and i'm sure it's the same way with what you do you love the opportunity to work for yourself to build a brand to 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 take something basically out of nothing i mean you're you're cutting maybe dead trees or live trees or whatever you're doing yeah and you're making something beautiful out of you know and it's one of those things where you see it i I guarantee you ben there's times that you you've already saw the finished product before you made it you know what i mean yeah and a lot of times the more i barbecue and the things i do you make it look easy, I'm sure. If I came and watched you in your shop and you'd do it, I'd, I'd be like, I can go do that. I couldn't at all. Yeah. But you you would make it look so easy that I would think I'd be able to do that. And I know that when I do certain demo events, like, you know, Hartville's a big, that's a big, like, well, you, you were there Saturday. It was huge. And you saw the insanity and all the people, but yeah. it's organized chaos. It is. And I, ha- I, I plan for that. I don't know, probably at least, I mean, I know like, prior to the event, what I'm going to cook. You know, I have an idea. So it's sort of like a catering event because you've got yeah. thousands of people coming through there. Tons, I mean, thousands tons. of people. So you, you have to have, people to oh, show up. for sure. And so I thought with the added, you know, they, they had this new vendor row. So I thought, well, that's going to take a little bit of the burden off of us. And we were as busy as ever. And it's one of those things where you, you try to orchestrate, you know, my family comes out and help me. Friends come out and help me. Yeah, but you need to be, you know, as as the guy that's running it, you you, you have all this experience and knowledge where, you know, um, you have to basically, 
you know, you, you, you have to be in control of you. You know, you can't let, if something maybe goes bad that day or something doesn't go according to plan, you can't like freak out because then those people that are working with you are going to feed off that and they're oh, going to yeah. kind of freak out. So, but we didn't have the freak out moment that day. Everything went well and according to plan. Now, the only freak out moment would be we, we started running out of like forks and things to give people to eat yeah. with because there was just so many people. There was a substantial number of people there. It was, it was beyond what I was expecting. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I w uh, went up there because uh, I made the trophies for it. Yep. I made the trophies for it. Uh, which turned out really great. I hope I, I get should to... have brought my trophy that I won because I didn't get a trophy like that. Oh, well, we'll have Did you to see get... mine on the social. Uh, you got like a little guy, yeah, a little guy holding a rack of ribs. Yeah. I yeah. cherish that thing though. Yeah. That day that I won, I wanted that trophy so bad. I can't tell you how bad I wanted it. When I sat there in the crowd and they were naming, cause they were only, so there was 10 guys in Traeger that day Yeah. and they picked one dude to sitting there and I wanted that little thing that I mean that little trophy is like that big yeah I wanted that thing so bad and to hear your name oh there's no I couldn't imagine there's dude the, the 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 overwhelming just emotions of everything oh yeah because you know what you do you always want people to love what you do and to yeah. to appreciate what you do and you work hard you put a lot of blood sweat and tears in your products oh yeah and I guarantee you when you take something that you build for someone, and I can't even imagine the hours that you have in some of the the furniture that you custom build, yeah. and you take it and put it in their home, and for them just to be like, that's a feeling that that money can't buy. No, you can't beat you it. You know what I mean? You're 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 getting an emotion from a customer that bought something from you that you built. Yeah. That you built from. From the tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people are just, they're, they're blown away with it. And that, I think, fuels you. It does. You know, because I know that's the same way with me. You know, when I'm doing it, when I won that little guy, and then to hear that you won over the other 19 contestants. Yeah. It was surreal, man. I mean, and then to then catapult me all those years down the road. But again, I never stopped working hard, just like you had yeah. from the moment you decided, I'm sure there was a time that you went out on your own. You had to work hard for it, you yeah. know? And, you know, I continue to work hard, you know, and you continue to work hard. And I mean, we're just a couple of guys from Ohio sitting here on a back porch, just having a good time, getting ready to eat some mega yeah. killer steaks <laughs> later. Killer steaks. And it's just, you know, it's been awesome. It's it's pretty wild. So when when did you, uh, leave your full-time gig uh, at Summit Racing and, and go to Traeger? No, that's a good question. So that happened in 2019. 2019. So I basically demo cooked for Traeger for three years from 2016, 17, 18, and then part of early 19 and, and 2019 is when they, they reached out to me and uh, asked if I'd be interested. And, and when they called me, I said a thousand percent. Yeah. Um, Again, I love the brand. You know, I, I had a relationship developed with them. They knew me. They knew I had a sales experience from Summit Racing because I did phone sales for many years and I had some experience at other jobs where I'd done some sales. Yeah. So they knew I had that experience. Uh, the cooking background helped because, you know, we, we cook on obviously a, a grill and, uh, you know, throughout the year we'll do demos at stores. And so that helps, that experience helps me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when they reached out to me about the opportunity, uh, I said, yeah, I'm a thousand percent interested, you know, I, I'm ready to do this. So um, it was awesome when they called me to be able to have that opportunity and yeah, to, to just continue to do it today. It's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. To do something you love and get paid yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other thing I wanted to uh, talk about real quick is just the scope for anybody that hasn't been to grill fest and seen it. Mm -hmm. Um, I went over there. It was the first time I'd been there. I had never yeah. been to it. I, I was. I always go to Hartville for the tools. You yep. know, I do the tool demo. The I'm at uh, Tool Show and I do demos and all that stuff uh, for epoxy. But I, it was beyond like what I said. What I was expecting. I came over to you, and uh, you know, you called me over to. Uh, I think it was a. It was a Big Mac smash. Oh yeah, taco. we were doing the Big Mac Big smash Mac tacos, smash, man. Smash taco, and I, had, <laughs> I, I saw that you, at, at the time they were serving the macaroni with the uh, smoked sausage yep. too, and I made sure I grabbed that. But I came over, and then I, I 
I was standing there and I kind of looked around and realized how many grills you guys had going to keep up with the volume. Mm -hmm. And I think you had four uh, big timber lines behind you. Yeah, I think, yeah, so there were... Four or five of them. So we had, yeah, we had the Timberline XL, we had the little Timberline, then we had two 885 Ironwoods, then we had two of our griddles. Yeah, and the griddles. Yep. And then Diva had her stuff set up, too. The, oh, yeah, I forgot I had the Com 190, so we have a commercial unit that I brought out just for her. Yeah. Because I knew she'd be, I knew, I spoke to uh, Steve um, McMillan over at the store, and I said, hey, do you know what she's cooking for her demonstrations? And Steve's like, yeah. oh, yeah, she's doing steaks. She's doing reverse seared ribeyes, what we got going on now. And she's doing ribs. So I knew she needed space. Yeah. But I knew I needed space for all the stuff I had to prepare too. Yeah. So I brought that out for her to use for that. So that helped. <laughs> but to to like, the point of that was to show the, just the skill of what you're doing. Because most people, they're just cooking on one grill mm -hmm. and they struggle to get that done. Yep. You had all that going on. You have people helping you, obviously. Yep. But you're coordinating all that. You're making sure everything's hitting the crowd at the exact same time. Yep. Everything's going, and uh, you're keeping food in front of this endless line. It was an endless line. It was. I was there from, I was there for three and a half hours, and there was a solid line through all that, through you guys the entire time. It didn't. There was no break. It was insane. There wasn't, we had a plan that we were going to start with breakfast. We did a breakfast hash and we did pancakes. So we had, I had a timeline of what I was going to do. So the breakfast was going to run the, the longest because we yeah. started earlier. Grill Fest is from 10, from 10 to 4. You said you got there at 6.30 in the morning? Yeah. 6, 6.30 So I got on site at 6.30, but I actually started setting up there on Wednesday. Oh, wow. Just because I have so much food prep, so oh, much other stuff oh, to get yeah. done. Luckily for me, I live <clears throat> local where some of the other guys coming in, it's a lot, it's a lot it's a bigger struggle because they don't live. So luckily I'm close to home so I can do that stuff. So yeah. got set up on Wednesday, took the grills over, took the tents over, got all that stuff set up. It was a, able to food prep the next couple of days. But then I had a, a timeline of like, okay, we're going to start breakfast around this time. Cause we like to feed their staff, you know, and anybody else that may be wandering around early. So we'll usually yeah, start been there that for tool, for tool sale when you do it. Yeah. There's always food. But the problem is Ben is when you start, when you make the decision that we're going to serve food, you can't just turn it off. You're no. now you've committed. So usually we start around eight thirty. I think this time we started at nine because I was trying to get other stuff like staged and ready for yeah. the crowd. And so at nine o'clock, it's like okay, we're gonna start because once you start that sampling, you can't. You, it, it's a nonstop. I mean, we we would put food out on those tables continue. I mean, nonstop from breakfast hash pancakes. Um, we did smoked. Uh, mac and cheese with a with a smoked uh, sausage. You know, we coupled yeah. that. We did a barbecue parfait. I don't know if you saw those. They had like a baked bean with pulled pork and coleslaw. Those just flew as soon as they went out. I didn't. I didn't see that because <laughs> they went so fast. It was insane. I, it was. I stood there for uh, for a little bit, probably thirty minutes, and just watched. Yeah. And I could. It was just mind blowing to me. I mean, I've been to the tool. The tool demos and there's a lot of people there too but not in such a concentrated area where everybody it's like people just standing there with their hands out yeah i want i want more of this i yeah. want more of this yeah. Th that was good you gonna make more of that that was good i want yeah. i know i want another <laughs> one of those and <clears throat> it's just uh that's that's a, a pretty significant amount of pressure to be able to deal with all that through the course of the day yeah yeah, yeah. so the uh, i was seriously impressed because uh, usually when i see you, you it's like i said a tool sale and if you're there you're cooking outside yep. and i don't see the whole setup and it's a much smaller scope yes because the tool sale people kind of don't realize that you're over there grilling mm -hmm. and titus would be like hey go over here he, he's, yeah <laughs> he's cooking run over there before people know about it and so uh the it's I just, I was, it was far beyond what I expected for, for the, for yeah. Grill Fest. The, um, what was I going to ask you? All right. So you're traveling with Traeger all the time. You're getting to try out stuff. The, what is, uh, of all the places you've gone, what's the, 
best barbecue you've had while you've been traveling? Oh, wow. So actually, so that's a good question. So I, so we're going to, we're going to say the four states that we cover. Okay. So we cover Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky. So there's a place in Indianapolis called Half Liter Barbecue. Not bad. They do a good job. I like the fact that they have burn ends on the menu. Okay. Because so if people don't know what burn ends are, they're from the brisket point, and you'll make burn ends out of them. Yeah. So a lot of that, that's kind of hard to find on a menu at most barbecue places. I'm sure if we went to anywhere near us, yeah. You know, there may you may be lucky to find them. You you may not find them. You know, like if you went. Uh, to maybe mission and stuff, they're not going to have burn-ins. You know, yeah. you're, it's just Damon's back in the day never had burn-ins. It was pretty much ribs. Yeah. So finding burn-ins is hard to find. So I appreciate the fact they have burn-ins on their menu. So their burn-ins, they're good. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a place in Lexington, Kentucky, because I covered the state of Kentucky, um, called Blue Door Smokehouse, I believe. Really good, really good barbecue. Teeny little, I mean, it's it, it would be like on Guy Fieri's diners, drive-ins, and dives. It's you. a teeny little place. And people told me, you got to go to this place because, you know, when you're in barbecue for a living and that's what you do, everyone tells you where you should go. Oh, yeah. And I get it all the time. And it's not that I want to be a barbecue snob, nor do I feel I am, but I think my wife says I am. <laughs> and I guess sometimes I am. Yeah. Um, so, uh, really good barbecue, though. I mean, I, I love collard greens, and they have good collard greens there. Okay. Um, the weird thing down in that area is they do like a, like a smoked potato salad down there. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. And it is because I don't really I know I've I know people do it, and uh, so they had that there, but their brisket. W- so anytime I go to a place, oh, for me to judge them, I'll do their. I know, right? Yeah. Mayonnaise and hot and yeah, yeah kind of weird. weird, but That's I usually I, I always try to get the brisket. Everywhere, you know, I always try to judge people by their brisket. Yeah, you know, we have a local guy. You know, I'll throw out to to Sean Wagler. You know, Sean's a good friend of mine. He sets up over at Hartwell Hardware on Wednesdays, and Sean's got he does a good job with his brisket. He really does. You know, he's a hustler. He works hard, and um, so usually when he's over there on Wednesdays, I'll pop over if I'm home, grab a sandwich. I like to support local people. Yeah, I'll run over and grab a sandwich from Sean, but um, uh. Yeah, so in Kentucky, there's a place called Red State Barbecue. And, uh, man, you'll see billboards everywhere for them. And, again, it's a small place. I expect When I saw their billboards, I expected to see this massive yeah, huge. place. And it's teeny. Hmm. And, uh, and, it, and it's not bad, you know. I mean, and the bad thing with barbecue is this. It's so – sometimes it's inconsistent. And you can't be inconsistent. Yeah. You know, I had the opportunity um, a few weeks, so a couple months back, um, you know, my daughter works at a place local down uh, in Canton called the Howland Bird. It's a chicken place. Okay. So uh, f- good family that owns it. And uh, so my, my daughter works there. And uh, so I know the, the brothers that own it. And uh, they approached my daughter because they knew I barbecue. And occasionally, as my schedule permits, we'll... We'll uh, cater some weddings and different things, you know, birthday parties, you know, as, as time allots with my job. We'll do certain things like that. So yeah. they know I barbecue. Uh, so they reached out to me and asked me, you know, asked my daughter, you know, you think your dad would ever want to come to the restaurant and do a barbecue night or whatever? Yeah. So I met with Niall and spoke with them about it. And so we did. We did a barbecue night on on June, July and August of this this year. And uh, super successful, you know. We did. We changed up the menu. They allowed me to pick the menu. I actually picked the pricing for them. Oh, that's cool. And we did really well. We we sold out the first night. We sold out the ribs and chicken within a couple hours, you know. And it didn't get busy. We ran it for like a four hour stint. Yeah. You know, I had plenty of pulled pork to get them through the four hours, but I only made so many racks of ribs, so much chicken, and it started from like four to nine. But like the first that first four o'clock hour, like it really didn't start getting busy until about six, and then. Um, yeah, the second day or the second month we did it in July it was super successful, and then on uh, August when we did it, man, it was we did a pitmaster platter, which was really cool. Oh wow! And I got some pictures I think on my social of it, but we did like a, I think a half rack of ribs, a half a chicken, 
you got smoked um, jalapeno sausage, you got uh, kryptonite baked beans. My wife makes these awesome baked beans. Um, and then we did smoked mac and cheese and it came with cornbread and it was like only like 39 bucks. It would definitely feed two people. Maybe you, maybe, maybe just yourself because yeah. Ben's a big guy. So I would, maybe it maybe Ben would just kill that by himself, but Never. it was awesome. It was fun to see. It was cool to see your food being served in, in a restaurant. Yeah. And, and the reason I say all that, when you ask me about some of the best barbecue and I'm not saying that mine's the best because Everyone feels that theirs is the best, you know. It's always like the fastest car scenario when I worked yeah. in summer racing. There's always a faster car, yeah. you know. And there's a lot of great barbecue. We've all had it, you know. So I always laugh when people are like, this person makes the best this. And, and I appreciate that. And I love that they're passionate about their friends' barbecue or their, their husbands or their spouses or their wives or whoever's making it. Yeah. I'm glad they feel that way, <clears throat> you know. Because a lot of people make great barbecue. It's not rocket science. But you, you don't want to... The, the biggest thing that hurts it is just the quality and your products speak for themselves quality. The worst thing that you can do as a business owner, you know, and, and like the time that I have to spend with kryptonite barbecue isn't a lot throughout the year, but when I do, you can't sacrifice your quality. Oh no! You know, so when I had that opportunity to sell my barbecue in his restaurant, number one, when I got that opportunity, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm representing him. I mean, he's allowing me to, to sell my food through his restaurant yeah. to his customers. Now, I had a lot of family and friend that came to support me, you know, a lot every month, yeah. you know, that came out. But I'm representing the Howling Bird, basically, you know, even though it was a collaboration, you know, his, his name, you know, is being out yeah. there. So it was important to me that everything that I served was that I didn't skimp, that I didn't try to cut you know, corners just to make an extra buck. You know, I, I would make yeah. it as though I was serving it to you or if you hired me for a private event, yeah. I want to put my best foot forward and make it the best. And I don't want, I don't want it to be where it's so great that the next time you order it or I come to do something for you that the next time you have it, it's different. And we've all been to those places. Yeah. And that's my biggest fear with sometimes with restaurant owners. I have friends just like them and others that are in the restaurant business and they have a great product. And I say, please don't change what you're doing. Because how many times have you maybe went over the years to a restaurant that you enjoyed and then down the road you go back and it's it's not the same. They changed something or they took something off the menu that you liked. Yeah. And it's the same thing with your with what you do. I mean, just think if you build a piece of furniture for someone and then a year from now they order another piece of furniture and you just, eh, and you just throw it together, then they get it and it's not, you know what uh, I mean? What they were expecting. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to do that with anything in life. And that, I think that's the biggest thing with you said earlier about a lot of people see what we do yeah, and they see what we have and what we've worked for and they want to be where we, where we are, but it took a lot of work for us to both get where we are at today. Yeah. You know what I mean? We both worked hard. I mean, I can't imagine the logs and junk. I did a tough mutter. Can you imagine I did a tough mutter? Yeah. I think when I was 35, I'm 53 now. Oh, wow. Yeah, you didn't realize I was that old, did you? I figured you were my age. <laughs> I'm still pretty close. <laughs> so I did a tough butter when I was 35. One of them was you had to carry this log. <laughs> it was a whole, it was like hold your wood or something like that. Yeah. Some crazy. All the names were crazy in the contest. Yeah. A lot so, of that's what she said stuff. In have, yeah. yeah. Have you ever done one? No, I've never done that. You never done a tough butter? No, I. You've done a Spartan run? No, the closest thing I ever did was a team building thing with FedEx where they stuck us out in the woods for a week. Okay. And uh, it was not like not like Marine Corps drop you in the woods type of thing, yeah. but like you're out at a camp and you're doing stuff and it was all this team building things like jumping off of cliffs yeah. with the wires hooked oh, yeah. up and carrying people and all that stuff. So then you pretty much did one because that's what that's what a tough mutter is. Because a tough mutter is essentially just an obstacle course. Isn't yeah. It? So it's 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 length as far as mileage. Yeah. And then there's all these obstacles, but what you never take into account is the terrain, right? Yeah. So you don't realize like it would be like us leaving your back porch and going into these woods. And so we, one of the obstacles was carrying this log. Now there was four of us on our team. So I'm tall. One of the other guys was tall. The other two weren't so. So they're not helping so much. So me and my friend Bobby are this log was yeah. just, I don't know how much it weighed. So now you're already so many miles in, you've already done all these obstacles. 
you're pretty spent. You're, you're getting spent. Now you have to carry this. And you can't, once you lift it, you cannot put it back down. No kidding. You can't put the log back down once you lift it. <clears throat> Teamwork. Everyone's to help each other. So we have to carry this thing. And then we're eventually sort of moving over our heads, putting on this shoulder because your shoulder is killing you from carrying this log. And then you have to go. And then there's this wall. And you have, there's a hole in this wall that you have to set the log in. Slide it through so far. People have to. Then you have to climb over the wall Use to the slide, and then, and of course, the, you know the holes in the law in the walls are way down here where you have to really bend down to get. It was brutal. <laughs> so I say that to just say our journeys. People don't see they they sometimes you know not that we're rock stars and glamorous at what we do, but we're we're both very appreciative and blessed for what we get to do. You know what yeah. I mean? Where we're where we're at in our stages of life. Yeah. And I say that with that tough mutter because that obstacle course, when you look at it, you don't, when you look at it on paper, you're like, ain't, yeah, that, that. ain't that bad. Yeah. But when you're in it and you're navigating through it and some of those things that you look at and you read about it, you're like, ah, that's, that's going to be easy. Sometimes it's not. Yeah, it's, some, it. it's challenging, you know, and, oh, yeah. and just like your job and my job you got good days and bad days you know what i mean it's just part of life i mean oh, things yeah. happen where people don't see or things maybe don't go according to plan or you know but you're going to have way more good days than you are bad days you know you try to you know yeah. you try to but that's i mean yeah the tough mutter that's a good metaphor for the the journey yeah because the you know the if anybody's listened to my origin story journey's been pretty tough yeah it uh there were some big hills to climb and uh yeah the people don't realize that they just see hey uh must be cool to be your own boss or must be cool to do that or must be cool to be able to barbecue all the time or uh you know you're i get it uh not all the time but sometimes you know you get yahoo's on there jump on your social and be like oh you're not doing anything special or i can do that or whatever and, and they really don't understand everything that goes into it and you had said earlier you know like delivering a piece of furniture to a customer and you, you handing your product your your food over to uh, somebody and them just their eyes being like mm -hmm. wow and and then you start going through everything that you did to get it done like yep. i start i deliver the furniture and people that have followed me for a while they hear me say it but they don't realize everything gets into it you'd be like well, you know, I harvest my own trees. I, I go out in the woods. I harvest my own stuff. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And then they see what it actually entails. Like, mm -hmm. you're out there dealing with a 40,000-pound tree. Yeah. And uh, literally putting my life on the line to create furniture, putting my fingers on the line mm -hmm. all the time because, you know, stuff can oh. go bad in a heartbeat. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they don't really think about it. And then you start describing everything that you did and well yeah i went i cut the tree and here's a video of me cutting the tree and my uh my younger brother right down the hill here from where we're at we cut a tree down um and my younger brother was in the army he was an army ranger okay and uh we cut this tree down it was 40 inch diameter poplar tree and there's a video of it somewhere and it hit the ground he said it was like mortar fire hitting near Wow. He said, I've never, he said, I hadn't, because he, he'd never been out there with me when I did it. Yeah. And he said it hit the ground and the ground shook. Like he was standing a hundred yards away and the ground shook. And uh, I had another guy say the same thing. I was cutting a big, oh, I think it was cottonwood. It was like 40 inch diameter tree. Mm -hmm. And this guy lived a half a mile away. He was watching me do it. I used to, it, he actually, I used to work in construction for him. Okay. And he said he heard the saw and they heard the cracking of it going over and him and his grandson were standing there watching it and they could feel it in the ground a half mile away. Wow. The tree hitting the ground. And you're manipulating that, that just in itself. And then you, all the other things that go into it and the vision that goes into mm -hmm. taking that and turning it into something. It, And I, I say that because people... They hear that and they're like, wow, you know, that's a lot of stuff. But it's the same thing goes into cooking for people and the prep that goes into it yep. and all the work that has to be done from starting from the farmer, raising the animal right so that yep. you have a good product to be able to put in front of people and you have to find good places to buy, yep. buy the meat and people that are uh, butchering it correctly. And then you also have 
all the prep goes into it and the risk of feeding people. Yeah. Because there is a risk to that. Yeah, there is. You got to make sure that, that everything is cooked properly, proper yeah. temps, proper all that stuff. So it's so important that, you know, um, you know, I'm just like they, they have what they call uh, uh, serves. Uh, what is it? Uh, serve safe certified or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I've got those certifications where you take them. Now, they only last for so many years. So you have to re, you know, up them. But it, it, it's basically like a food handler's permit that you're, you're handling it properly. You're storing things properly, yeah. you know, all that stuff. Because it's important because, yeah, you don't want to get somebody sick. You know, yeah. we've all had food poisoning probably before, and it's not a fun experience, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I, I had it once. Somebody yeah. served me shellfish. I'm allergic to shellfish. Okay. It was it was not pretty. Yeah. No. The, uh, <laughs> it was a, that was a bad 24 hours. Yeah. It's actually a funny story. My wife gave herself food poisoning once. She was making chicken and drinking wine at the same time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting, I ate the chicken, and I felt fine. And she's like, there's something wrong with this food. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, it, but uh, that's where, you know, there is a risk in that, too. So, yeah. the, uh, did we, you want to check the steaks? We want to, you want to check the steaks yeah, real let's, quick? Yeah, let's, let's check them out and see what's going on. And see what's going on. Yep. And, uh. I, we have mentioned it. I didn't. I didn't mention it at the beginning. We are uh, filming and cooking on my back porch. Yes, we are. Just it's up awesome. the hill. Just up the hill from the Red Barn shop. Uh, the the view. Uh, wish we could show everybody the view. It's a beautiful Ohio yeah, it view. It is. It is. It's a beautiful. That's why I wanted to do it here because nothing says barbecue like Ohio on oh, a yeah, cool, man. cool autumn day. Yep. Uh, the only thing missing is a few beers, but it is a work day, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's check the steaks, see yes, how sir. they're doing, let's and do then it. Uh, we can uh, talk All a right. little bit more. Sounds good. Well, everybody, we checked on the steaks. Oh yeah. Man. He said they were ready to go, so we got them out. He he sliced them up all real nice, and uh, gonna gonna taste them here in a second. Hopefully, before the yellow jackets get too crazy with them. But uh, Keith, uh, why don't you explain exactly what you did? Because like what we've been talking about, yeah. a ton ton goes into this beautiful beautiful tomahawk steak. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, we picked up some nice tomahawks for today's podcast. Obviously, it's a special podcast. Yeah. You're doing a video podcast, man. Your first one, first, right? First That's video awesome. podcast. Got to awesome, gotta be able brother. to celebrate it. Yeah. So wanted to do obviously a beautiful visual. Obviously, I don't know if the folks can see this beautiful presentation board made by Red Barn. Uh, ben was so gracious; he made me this a few months ago, and I'm so thankful for it. Um, I will not cut on it because I don't want to scar it up, but I'll use it for like this to, to present. So at home, when we use it, we'll do the same thing here. I'll cut on another, like a disposable cutting board or something or an old cheapy board that doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Yeah. And then we'll place it on this beautiful board that Ben made. You see the beautiful epoxy, the Traeger logo that he has. He even has some pellets that he incorporated in the epoxy, which is really cool of our our Traeger pellets, but I wanted to feed you today, man. I mean, I work for Traeger. We're all about bring. So Traeger is all about bringing people together. You know, Traeger talks about the Traeger hood. Yeah. You know, it's about bringing people together to create a more flavorful world. We're all about experiences, getting people together, you know, cooking together, conversation, just like we did today, man. What a beautiful view here in Northeast Ohio. You can start seeing the trees change in a little bit. Just man. a little bit. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful fall day. Feels great. But yeah, we got about a probably two and a half, two two and a half pound tomahawks. That what we did was, we used our Traeger prime rib and coffee rubs that we seasoned them with. Yep, they're right there on the cutting board. Uh, spritzed them with just a little bit of apple juice just to set that um, uh, seasoning a little bit. Yeah. Plus that that draws a little bit more smoke, you know. So we okay. put them on the grill at 225 degrees. We did so. What we did what we is this is called like a reverse sear. So we put them on the grill 225 and we're looking for an internal temp about 110 to 115. When it hits that, you can either turn the grill up to like a higher temp and you want to finish it wherever you'd like. I like a medium rare, so I'm usually about 130, 132 range. Yeah. So it depends on what the person prefers. You can either sear them in a cast iron, whatever you want to do to get a nice crust. We have a flat rock that we just came out griddle. You can sear them on that, whatever you want to do if you want to get a nice little crust. 
If you don't want to do that, you just want to finish them on the grill. You can do that too once you hit the desired internal temp. But that's the big key with any cooking is internal temperature. That's the important thing. A lot of people ask me this, you know, when's it going to be done? When's it going to be done? You know, and everything is going to be different based on internal temp. Yeah, what you're cooking. Yeah, so the, the, the most important thing is, you know, you're cooking to the internal temperature. I've heard a lot of people tell me, and you're a strong guy. You know, they'll, 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 I don't know if you've ever seen people do, well, this is this. You ever see people do that with their hands? Like, this is yeah. medium rare. Dude, you're, you're, you, you, you've got strong hands. You're dealing with big lumber and junk all the time. So if you try to do that, how are you going to really know? You're going to press a little bit different than yeah. somebody else. So you want to use either, you know, I got this meter that we use today to, to reg register the internal temperature of that steak. Use a nice handheld. You want to you know, know the internal temperature. We're not Superman. We can't see what the internal temperature of that steak is. Yeah. So you use the proper devices to set you up for success. So I'm assuming it's going to be great. Oh, I'm sure it is going to be great. I mean, I'm ready to dive in and try some. I think you need to get in there too, my man. Yeah, we're going to, so, uh, we'll, we'll try it out here and then I'm going to get you a piece in ask there. Ask you a question. Oh yeah. To, to wrap things up. Wow. Look at that. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice big piece there. Mm. Holy crap. That is super duper tender. Mm hmm So good. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's real good. Might need a napkin for yourself. Maybe. My, uh, the healer was here. He'd be freaking out. <laughs> Dusty, if anybody follows me, my, my, my red healer. That is outstanding. Mm. Wow. And again, we didn't do anything special. I seasoned it properly, cooked it to, on the proper temperatures, we let it rest, we sliced it up, you know. Again, Diva Q was just at Hartville's Grill Fest and she taught the same method that we did today. Mm -hmm. But what if you wanna take this steak to a whole nother level, she'll do a compound butter and I'm telling you what, if we did one of those today and put that on there, I mean, it just, it takes it just to a whole new level having that. Totally so different. It's one of those things where, you know, a lot of people want to do type of stuff like this. And it's fun to do this because a steak like that, I mean, it, it'll probably feed a Ben. I mean, that's a big steak. <laughs> but a big steak. sometimes you can feed a family with that depending on the, the eater, the size of the eaters. I mean, that's, a, that's a, probably about a two, two and a half pound steak. So, you know, but it's nice for special occasions. Oh, yeah. You know, you got like a Christmas Eve or something or your, an anniversary or whatever. You can do something fun. Cut it up and slice it like yeah. that. Yeah, and you let the grill do the work. It wasn't hard. We, we put them on there, let them do its thing. and Yeah. Super easy. I that might is, grab one more little piece. Yeah, outstanding. I just call my name. <laughs> no, no, I think that piece right there. Yeah. A little bit of that. That is. Seasoning on there. Good stuff. Man. Poor Titus has been filming us. Oh, wow. He, he's got to get a piece of this, man. He does. I'm just hearing <laughs> that's so good mm. so the one one question that i had left as we're wrapping up here yeah the uh everybody that we've had on so far including me titus dropped this one on me it was funny because i was gonna do this and then he asked me okay so anybody that follows me knows that music's a big part of what i do i'm always listening to music while i'm working mm. And I've been asking everybody what their top five favorite songs to work to are. Wow. Uh, we had, uh, Jess gave us her top five artists. And then Bloom Hill gave us kind of a, a myriad. I don't even know if they even got to five. And then uh, Daryl with Sky High, he gave me a legit five. I let him look on his phone and he gave me five. <laughs> um, and honestly, I had to look on my phone. You don't, you didn't see it because we weren't videoing, but I, I had to look on mine. But Man. top five favorite songs to work to, you put them on, and you know, excuse me, you know you're just going to get stuff done. Wow. That's hard because usually when I demo, we may have some music just playing. Um, I grew up in the 80s, so I'm an 80s guy, so I listened to a lot of 80s stuff. Nothing but when I was younger, you know, I was a, I was a metal guy. May not look that, but... Oh, um, you got the beard? Metal says I was a, beard. I was a metal guy. Beard says you know. metal to me. Um, so I don't know if I should do bands or songs. That's tough. It's tough. I it mean, took me a little bit. 
Phew. What do you prefer, songs or bands? It's, yes, songs. It's, it's whatever's best for you. Whatever, mm. whatever pops in your head. Because uh, for me, there was like four. Like, yep, yeah, those four, and then the fifth one. I was like, ah. Uh. I guess it depends on the mood and what I'm doing. Yep. Because I know you're that way. When I know when I will follow you on your reels, when you post certain things, it'll you can you, you can, can almost determine the mood. the mood that maybe you're feeling that day that you yeah. would play. Yeah, I think I said yesterday. Um, yesterday was a Metallica day. Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so wow. I would say one of my all-time favorites would be Queensryche, come, uh, not Queensryche, um, Silent Lucidity. Okay. It's a great song. I know that song, yeah. Great song. That's a great song. Um, oh, shoot. Pink Floyd, Learning to Fly is a good song. My younger brother loves that song. That's a good song. Yeah, for sure. Um, wow. Metal Days back in the day, Testament. Testament. Many people never heard of Testament. Wow. Um, that's a deep dive right there. Yeah, that's like 80s thrash metal. Okay. Um, man, um, probably we'd go back to the New Order album, and probably the, the title song, The New Order, is a pretty good song. New Order. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm glad yeah, thrash, I asked this question. 80s thrash metal. you got to look up oh, Testament. Yeah. Chuck Billy, lead okay. singer. They're still together. They still, <laughs> Alex Skolnick. It's funny, so the guitarist, Alex Skolnick, um, thrash metal guy, yeah, but plays blues, and then he was in the Trans-Siberian Orchestra for a stint. No kidding. Super versatile guitarist, probably one of the best guitarists that people don't even really know who he is. Yeah. Phenomenal guitarist. So if you listen to any of their early stuff, I think their first album was called The Legacy, but if you go and look, listen to their, their music, yeah, he's uh, a great guitarist. If you just listen to the yeah the, the guitars and a um, wide range. so what we got three that's four that's four you gave me four already okay then I gotta throw out probably Megadeth Megadeth um yeah man which one maybe Angry Again Angry Again that's Megadeth. a good one that is depending on the mood so if you're angry oh yeah that's a good one you're mad about something yeah that's a that's a hard hitting one that you know yeah Dave Mustaine yeah so that's a great one that yeah Angry Again it's been a while since I've heard that song but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a good song cuz I mean anybody that follows me knows that I'm in I'm the heavier stuff for sure. Oh know? yeah, you probably listen to a little Pantera probably. Pantera's in there. I think Slipknot was in there, White Zombie. Yeah. Um I I have some some weird ones in there like I think Foo Fighters was on my top 5. Yeah. But it's usually pretty heavy. If you walk in the shop on any given day, it there's a wide range of stuff. I've made the joke that on my top 10 there's 20 songs on my top 10. But I remember trying to I remember trying to guess that when you did that. And I think I was way off. I don't even know what I even picked. Yeah. I remember when you did a contest for that. You did a contest asking people to Yeah, I did do that early a few months back. You asked people to, to guess what would be on there. And I'm sure I was way off. I think I said Taylor Swift. No, definitely not Taylor no, Swift. No, I, I, I thought maybe you liked Taylor. I mean, who knows, you know, but not, you a, know. Swi not a Swifty, no. No, the uh probably in sync, they're coming back. Oh man. I on this back porch. Uh, when was that? A month ago, I had my kids out here and I played them the top five songs that ruined music. NSYNC was on that list. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about Millie Vanilli? You know, I don't have any issue with Millie you know, Vanilli because all the uh, they all lip sync anyways. I think they all do today. Yeah. So they yeah. got a lot of grief back in the day for it. Yeah. Because of what happened with the music stopping and people don't know. Look up Millie Vanilli. Yeah. When they were touring somewhere and the music like stopped. stopped and they're like <laughs> holding mics and they didn't know not they didn't really know they, they weren't know the singers it was crazy so yeah it, crazy but yeah they tried i mean they, they had they the did. look they had the look so. it happens all the time now but now the cameras know to peel off, Pan of, off of them yeah i think yeah. Uh, that happened to mariah carey once and uh i don't remember it happens all the time they're oh yeah just with the day of the internet, now it finds its way onto the internet with cell phones. <laughs> but anyways, so that's your top five. That's awesome. Yep. The uh, I had a feeling your your set was going to be a little bit more to my taste, like Jess's uh, from Rhine Revisions. <sighs> ABBA was on her list. Mm. I was just like, disco, huh? Disco? Could have said really? Van Halen. I mean, you can't go with, wrong with David Lee Roth. Oh, you Diamond can't go Dave. wrong. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what... 
I, I mean, when he, when, when he went on his own, you know, he had a couple good things. I, I hated when they broke up. When I was a kid and they broke up, you know, man, that was like a bummer. It was, you know, Van Halen, not Van Hagar. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm one of those where I felt they were better with, with yeah. Diamond Dave. but They were. The, yeah. There was some great stuff in there. I was talking to my uh, my siblings about top 80 songs. Oh, yeah. And uh, Hot for Teacher with that drum solo yep. you're getting. Yep. That's iconic. Yep. Eruption. Eru- Eruption. It's on, Eddie it's, on the guitar. Oh, yeah. It's on my playlist. I mean. I've been trying to find one. There's Michael Anthony did a, a bass solo. I've been trying to find it for years. I can't find mm. it. It was awesome. And then, you know, Alex Van Halen on the drums, his solos are intense too. Yes. That, yeah. that uh, Van Halen's a very underrated band. Yeah. For From the 80s, everybody talks about uh, Guns N' Roses yeah. and, and uh, Rolling Stones and uh, who's the other one from then uh, that is Motley Crue. Yeah. And they're, they're okay. Yeah. But Van Halen just knocked them out one after another. Oh, man, when I was a kid. Badass and, songs. And, man, in junior high, that's when 1984 came out. Oh, yeah. You know, and Jump. And, I mean, yeah, it's, it's I guess, pop rock or whatever you want to call it back then. But, man, that was, like, you know, one of the best songs ever back then, you know, as the oh, kid yeah. growing up. You know, I was probably 14 years old in 1984 when that came out. And, yeah, it's still, when I hear that, it, you know how it is. It just takes it you back. you. Oh, yeah. You know, and... Yeah, they were such a great band, and yeah, it was such a shame when they did break up and then reunited later in life, which sadly, probably a lot of their best, obviously David's voice ain't the same as it yeah. was with a lot of those singers there, you know. My sister was bummed because she had Britain tickets to go out. see yeah. um, Aerosmith, you know, and they had to cancel it because Steven Tyler, I guess, blew his, his voice. voice yeah, he, he just, they're just getting old and they're trying and they can't they do are. it. It's sad. <laughs> it's crazy. We're getting old, man. Oh, we are. You can't, ch- you can't stop it. <laughs> can't stop it. Well, I really appreciate you coming out, Keith. This no, is, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate uh, it. For everybody that's watching, we're we're going to pull Titus up here and we're going to hammer oh, yeah. the rest of this oh, yeah. stuff. But the, uh, <laughs> you can come on up, Titus, if you want. Yeah, get you some steak, brother. Gonna, Grab uh, give, something give anywhere that looks here. good. But before it gets too cold. Yeah, before it gets too cold, or the yellow jackets get to it. But the uh, just wrapping up to to say once again, thanks so much for coming here. Your story's awesome. I love your story. I appreciate it. Um, cooking for us the whole time, doing the first video of uh, podcast with us. All super super cool. I keep forgetting to look at the camera. I know the. Uh, but once again, you guys can find Keith on Instagram at Kryptonite Barbecue and on Facebook. Yep. Um, you can find me at RedBarnHomeFurnishings.com or Red underscore Barn underscore Home or on Facebook or on YouTube. If you're watching this, you're already on YouTube. So yep. please like and follow. Gonna keep having great. Uh, hit that subscribe button, right? Yes, yeah, subscribe. Got to hit the subscribe gotta, button. Got to hit the subscribe yeah, you gotta button. Hit the subscribe button. Got to push that up for me. Yeah. And uh, if you uh, see anything that you like or if you want to get Keith for a special event, I'm sure yeah. he, he does that. Yeah, my calendar permits. I mean, I'm always I always listen. Yeah. You know, I you know, it may be a no just because of, you know, work schedule. But, you know, it never hurts just somebody wants to reach out. And if I'm available and I can make something happen, I will. But it's all dependent on my work schedule. Yep. That's that's awesome. So yep. if it works out, yep. which is the same with everybody. <laughs> yeah. And then if. Uh, if you get on there and you see anything uh, custom furniture wise for me, oh, yeah. don't hesitate to reach out. Everybody always says, well, I'm waiting until you're not busy. Well, guess what? I'm never not going to be busy. Yeah. So reach out, we'll, I'll get you on the work list. Yep. And, uh, you know, things are only going to get more expensive as time goes oh, on. Yep. So the sooner yep. you buy, the Just better. Just the way it is. Yep. But thanks so much for coming, no, brother. thank you, man. I appreciate I it, really brother. appreciate yep. you thank being you. here. Thanks for having me. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Hope you have a good month, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Boom. Ha, ha, ha.